Yeah, I've been fixing houses for for 35 years now, and um, I, I have some uh, some. There's a few things I'm fairly confident of. Um, there's a lot of things I'm not confident of. But let me let me start. Uh, with the things I'm pretty confident of. One is that there's no such thing as a green building. It's sort of a dangerous concept that has done, I think, a fair amount of damage. Uh, but a building is the most unnatural thing on the landscape. I mean, think, think about it. We, we want them to be warm when it's cold outside, cool when it's hot outside, light when it's dark outside, sometimes dark when it's light outside. Uh, we, of the hundreds of millions of species on the planet, we're willingly prepared to share our homes with maybe a couple dozen. Um, and uh, the, the most powerful force for renewal in nature is rot and decay. Rot and decay in a building is a sure sign that someone has done something wrong. So let's just put aside the idea that a building can be green. Um, it's, uh, every building is at some level an environmental mugging. We can make the mugging a little bit gentler. We're not. Uh, even the idea of the zero net energy building is a little bit misleading. Zero net energy is at some level a bookkeeping coincidence. It means the operational energy matches the production on site. Uh, zero net energy, for the most part, I've yet to see it calculated to include maintenance energy and uh, embodied carbon on construction. So uh, let's, we'll leave that there for the moment. So cor uh, corollary to, that's, so that's thought number one. Thought number two is a cor corollary to that which is that we can't build our way out of the problems we face. Building more buildings is not necessarily helpful. Um, I think that uh, builders and architects groups need to start giving their highest achievement awards to teams that choose not to build a building on an empty lot. Um, and then we can start thinking uh, a little more realistically about the problem. Um, so what this means is the buildings that we do build, each new building we build is a tremendous responsibility that has to be taken very seriously. We need new buildings to be as few, as energy efficient, and as space efficient as possible. Um, talk about how, how homes, at least, are getting bigger. Uh, I have some statistics. In 1950, we had 292 square feet per person. In 2010, it was 927 square feet per person, because not only are homes getting bigger, but households are getting smaller. Um, interestingly enough, in that same period, 1950 to 2010, the increase in national productivity was dropping at the same incline as uh, house size was increasing. Uh, I think the, uh, the correlation there is that we're now spending a lot more time wandering around our houses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, you know, I am a remodeling contractor, but uh, so, but please uh, take take my so to so keep that in mind when you when you hear my comments about uh, the tremendous responsibility of new construction. Represents. Okay, now let's move to retrofits of existing buildings. And, and it's often, you know, frequently cited statistic is something, on, you know, uh, of the buildings that will be in existence in 2050 or 2060 or pick your year, 75% or 80% or 90% pick your percentage uh, exists now. So we definitely have to figure out what to do with, with, um, with existing buildings. Uh, and one thing, uh, I'm pretty confident of is that a 21st century building shouldn't burn things indoors. Um, so that space heating, domestic hot water, cooking, clothes drying, um, candles for holidays are fine. <laughs> Although my wife found some great uh, LED battery operated tea candles, which are really, really lovely. Um, so we have to move 
and, and I, you know, it's funny when I when I uh, when I put together plans for clients to do this to to move their homes away from burning things indoors. Uh, the, the area I get the most resistance is cooking, and uh, I think uh, it just it's really funny. But I think it's explained by the fact that most of us have somewhere between one and a half and two percent Neanderthal DNA. <laughs> and there's something about the fire on the cave floor that has just stuck with us. <laughs> um, but there's more and more research uh, indicating that one of the most polluted environments you will encounter is around your gas cooktop for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, including the fact that most range hoods don't really work very well. <laughs> we, we started to commission our, our range hood installations and we have found how easy it is to do badly. Um, fortunately, this was not a kitchen that we did, but the, the worst case we tested was, it was a six burner Viking range with a, an enormous range hood rated at 1200 CFM cubic feet per minute. Um, we tested it, it actually drew 21 CFM. So a tiny fraction of what it was supposed to just because the installation was so convoluted. But not only that, it was 73 decibels. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is a record for decibels per CFM. <laughs> I mean, it, the, one of my colleagues said it was tantamount to using a, a leaf blower indoors to dissipate <laughs> cooking orders, odors. Um, uh, so, the, the last point is that um, it's really hard to retrofit existing buildings. It is so much easier to get it right the first time. It's so much more cost effective to get it right the first time. The cost of deep energy retrofits is the single strongest argument for more stringent energy codes in new construction. Um, to the point where retrofits are hard uh, and Mark picked 10% as a hope for savings target. I think that's, I think we can do a little better than that. But uh, we have to, when we start looking at the cost per ton of carbon avoided to do retrofits, it gets pretty high pretty fast. The, the Obama administration put uh, the social cost of carbon at about $40 a ton. We've done deep energy retrofits where it was three, four, five hundred dollars per ton. So, I mean, there's lots of reasons to do a comprehensive deep energy retrofit, but they're not a scalable solution to, to the carbon problem. At some point, we have to start allocating that money more effectively. Um, you know, I have estimated that for the cost of two or three deep energy retrofits of a Lexington single-family home, we could probably buy a U.S. senator. <laughs> the representatives come even cheaper. Uh, so that something to think about in terms of allocating financial resources for effectiveness, but. So, but I don't want you to be pessimistic about fixing houses because uh, the single most frustrating thing about, about my evaluation of the existing houses is how many opportunities are missed when people are doing routine renovations and maintenance. It, it's just crazy. Um, there's, how many of you have, uh, know what a blower door is? All right. So, uh, just remember the term, and the next time you're contemplating any sort of work on invasive work on your house, try to get a blower door test done. Because uh, what it, the single easiest time to improve the thermal performance of your home is when you have walls opened and you can fix the insulation and the air sealing very, very easily, just by testing with the blower door, finding the leaks, and then fixing the leaks. If you wait to put the drywall up and the paint and the trim and the carpet and the furniture to decide to fix the problems with your air sealing and insulation. It's gonna be 40 or 50 years before it's it fixed. And we don't, we don't, we can't be frittering away opportunities that way. There's an awful lot you can do 
to, to get that 10, 15, 20% reduction just by being thoughtful about how you fix and maintain and think about, think about your homes. You know, I would encourage you to put together a master plan for your home that weans it off fossil fuels and uh, just have it in place so that when you need to do something, you know that it fits into the plan. In all likelihood, you're not going to be in the house long enough to implement the full plan, but at least you'll be, you won't be setting subsequent orders up for, for more expense and uh, problems than they need. I better shut up there. <laughs> well, that was the funniest talk on retrofits. <laughs> <laughs>